Welcome back to Mini Mayhem. I'm Austrick Vox, and guys, we can officially count the number of episodes of Star we have left on our fingers. As of recording this, we only have seven episodes of the series left. Yes, only seven. That's four weeks of Star. How are we going to live? A world without Star Butterfly? Oh, no. Well, okay, let's not mourn just yet. As four more weeks of the show means four more weeks of theories and speculation. Which actually brings me to today's topic. With only seven episodes left, it's time we ask probably one of the biggest questions out there. Who will be the final villain of Star vs. the Forces of Evil? We admittedly don't have that much time to introduce anyone new. And considering it looks like the next few episodes might be on Earth, I'm really not sure how they could set up another villain. So let's start this list with what seems like the most obvious candidate, Mina Loveberry, the insane, twisted Solarian warrior. Mina Loveberry has been around since season 2 of the series, and I never imagined she would end up as the final antagonist. Yet, at this point last season, we had the episode Monster Bash, which by the episode's resolution, we knew Meteora Butterfly would rise up as the final antagonist of season 3. She was our big bad. By the end of Cornell Nation, we see Mina's Crow Sebastian soar through the sky, letting out an insidious crow, informing the audience that there's no happy ending yet. We may need a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, and definitely a lot of tears before the show can wrap up and say, they lived happily ever Ever after. Now with Mina, I'm very conflicted and honestly would be underwhelmed. We went from Toffee, who wasn't only slick and cunning, but could possess people, had a grand master plan that he pulled off, and went out on a note that insinuated he could return. Hold that thought. Then we had Meteora, someone who we had from the very beginning. But once we learned more about her, we got to recontextualize her actions. And it allowed season 3 to end on a very compelling note. Yeah, Meteora is going about this the complete completely wrong way, yet she isn't really wrong. They stole the kingdom from her and her family. She doesn't really feel like she has that many options left. So to go through all of that and end up with a somewhat tragic character who's mainly played for comic relief, who isn't nearly as compelling as Toffee or Meteora, and it looks like they're just gonna build some kind of giant robot armor. Yeah, that's not the antagonist I thought Star would go out with. While it does make some sort of sense as Mina was never really an ally, she was always sort of working in her own interest, and her origins give her a direct connection to Eclipsa, they can make it work, but I'm not really sure if they'll stick the landing. Just because of who Mina is, how much we know about her. When Mina's on screen, even as an antagonist, I don't get intimidated. Meteora had an intimidation factor. Toffee had an intimidation factor. Mina, mm, she's just cuckoo bananas. But that honestly has me thinking Mina could be a red herring. For a different villain to rise up at the end, so let's move over to another suspect, Toffee. All right, listen. Amongst the abundance of Toffee references in this season, we have two episodes that directly set up his return. One, Butterfly Follies, where Glosseric implies that Star killing Toffee could have been a mistake. And then, Meteora's Lesson, where Glosseric and Meteora time travel to a moment that cemented Toffee's hatred for humans and magic, validating Toffee's thesis in front of impressionable monsters. Considering we still don't know why Glosseric wanted to go back to the past and help Meteora dip down by choosing Toffee as the target, but one thing's for sure, it's not over yet. We also have to factor in Eclipse's spell with no name. That episode kind of came out of nowhere, accompanied with an ominous ending that one could argue was sort of a cliffhanger. Eclipse had developed the spell to slay Septarians, and we know the spell was used on Toffee, although it ended up only severing his finger due to Moon getting cold feet. Toffee is the one character I can see returning as the final villain without it really feeling rushed. We can figure out why he knew so much about the Book of Spells, such as the Whispering Spell or the implications of knowing the All-Seeing Eye in Mini Pendant's Day. Why was he so confident in his plan to corrupt and destroy the realm of magic? And why did he succeed? On top of all of that, Toffee is legitimately intimidating, because not only is he a capable warrior, he's a strategist, and you do not not want to cross paths with him. Not to mention, I feel like Toffee may be one of the only few things that could get Moon back involved in the story. We're not really sure if she's going to return 
to Muni after the events of Cornell Nation. She may want to still be out on her own for a bit, and that has to go somewhere. It would feel like kind of a waste of time for Moon to go out and essentially establish another village within Muni, only for that village to dissipate because, hey, everyone likes Eclipse and Globgore now. It just feels too easy. I feel as if Moon being removed from the main conflict will come into play once true danger is lurking about. Having her regrets on the sidelines so she could have a truly triumphant return. Remember, her armor is still in the ruins of Muni Castle, just waiting to be put on. But moving on from Toffee, let's actually focus on as both no name, how that could be the final antagonist. The show is called Star vs. the Forces of Evil, and magic is subjectively evil. You can do some pretty scary things with magic, and this is highlighted in the spell with no name. As stated in the spell's self-titled episode, it has the potential to eat through every single dimension until there's nothing left. Armageddon on an interdimensional scale. Um, that's crazy. That's actually crazy. We don't really know if this spell has an MO or if it's more of an agent of chaos. But either way, the spell itself may see fit to exterminate every single dimension in order to keep the queen's immunity safe. Or again, it could just be mindless, destroying every single thing in its path. And I think I could actually get behind the idea of a spell being the final antagonist. The one thing the butterfly family has relied the most on. And it would be the perfect way to actually bring the spells within the wand out into the quote-unquote real world. Could you imagine Star actually talking and interacting with her spells? Or Eclipsa talking and interacting with her spells? What about Moon spells? There's so much potential for story here. And could you imagine the final villain of Star being someone you can't even see? That if you make contact with them, you're dead. That's it. You're gone. Again, I can get behind this. But let's say it's not a spell, but still a form of magic. I can also see the final antagonist being the realm of magic itself. Look, we're due to another trip to this place very soon. The episodes Divide and Conquer left a really big question mark on the morality of that place and the unicorns that inhabit it. What's their endgame? Do they have a grand vision of the future? How magic should be used? What about the dimension that Moon left her handprints on? Why did the firstborn call Star to the realm of magic just to say later, you and your mom don't belong here? Why did the firstborn send Moon to the Pi Folk? Ah, so many questions! But you get where I'm coming from. A lot of things don't add up with the realm of magic, and this could still involve Toffee in the story, which could also make more sense of Glossary's sentiments that Star and Moon shouldn't have been in the realm of magic, that defeating Toffee and restoring the realm of magic may have been a mistake. I'm just saying, do you trust the firstborn? After everything you've seen. Now, it is kind of twisted that Star did kind of birth her, but oh well, life sucks. Sometimes you just gotta kill your child. Ain't that right, Thanos? The the inhabitants of the realm of magic would make for a great final battle. How powerful is the firstborn? Well, the best way to find out is to watch her kick some butt, even if it's the butt of our main characters. With all this said, there's only one more candidate I have for a final villain. And as someone we've talked about before, Severus of Tarsus. But now it's looking less and less likely. Maybe Nefsi and everyone else working on the Book of Spells put him in as a red herring, but something's not adding up. Why mention this powerful, dangerous Septarian that Globgo had an issue with, that the Magic High Commission had an issue with, with the various Queens of Muni had an issue with, all the way up to Moon's mother, Comet Butterfly's chapter, the last time he was mentioned. Was he killed off screen? Did he end up getting crystallized by Romulus? Or is he still out there? This is someone who wants to commit genocide against all humans. Someone who Toffee probably adopted his ideals from. And if Toffee was a prince, I think it's likely that Seth could have been the king. I'm truly rattling my brain on if he'll actually appear. Let's say they establish him in the very next episode. Well, again, we only really have seven episodes left. Now granted, Toffee was introduced halfway through season one, at a point where we only had five episodes left, but he was a villain beyond season one. Seth would only have the end of season four, and I'm not sure they can do a good job of establishing him, his goals, his personality, and how much of a threat he is without it feeling rushed. He didn't have the leisure that Bill Cipher himself had, popping up in three episodes before unleashing the apocalypse. We're already kind of entering the climax of the show. It feels like the time to introduce him has kind of already passed, unless Seth is someone we already know. Maybe Seth 
Seth is toffee. I've seen that idea thrown around a few times, and I think it's something worth exploring, so I plan to cover that theory more in a future video. Regardless, as much as I would love to see another Septarian, you can't have enough lizard daddies. I would want them to do it in a way that's well paced, and at this point, I'm not sure if it'll be well paced if he was introduced right now. Which is really unfortunate, because I like his design. I like how much of a threat he poses. And I would kill to know what his voice would even sound like. A lot of people were expecting Ron Perlman for Globgore, but I think he would be a great Seth. But this is where I turn the conversation over to you guys. What do you think? Who would you want to be the final villain of Star vs. the Forces of Evil Season 4? Subsequently, the final villain of the series. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RoundTableVids. And for my own thoughts, you can find me at AllShockVox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please start a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ostrich Vox, out.